Welcome to our lecture online. Let's now find the second derivative of a few functions that involve radicals. And whenever you get a radical like that, I recommend that you change it to an exponential form first. So we're going to rewrite it as y equals the quantity x plus 3 to the 1 half power. Now since we're looking for y double prime, that means we're looking for the second derivative with respect to the variable the function is related to. So in this case it would be with respect to x. So y prime, the first derivative, is equal to, put the exponent in front, 1 half times x plus 3 to the exponent minus 1, which is minus 1, uh, minus 1 half, times the derivative of what's inside, and that would be times 1. Right? The derivative of x plus 3 is simply 1. So we don't really need to write that, but I just thought I'd put that in there just to realize that we're still taking the derivative of what's inside. Okay, so when we rewrite that, that becomes y prime is equal to 1 over 2 times the quantity x plus 3 to the 1 half power. And it's always a good idea to write it with positive exponents and bring it to the numerator, to the denominator. Or I guess what we could have written, we could have left it like that, we could have said y prime is equal to 1 half times the quantity x plus 3 to the minus 1 half. Either way, we should get the same result if we find the derivative. Now, come to think of it, I think on the right side, that's probably easier to do it that way. So let's see what we get. So now we're going to find y double prime. That's equal to minus 1 half times 1 half, which is minus 1 fourth, times the quantity x plus 3 to the minus 1 from the exponent, which is minus 3 over 2, times the derivative of what's inside is times 1. And if we then write that, we get y double prime is equal to negative 1 over 4 times the quantity x plus 3 to the 3 halves power. So that's typically how we write the answer with a positive exponent. So that looked like it was the easiest thing to do. Okay, now let's see if we get the same answer when we take the derivative using the quotient technique on the left side. So here we have y double prime. And I probably need to give myself a little bit more room because we're not using a quotient rule. It takes more space. So y double prime is equal to the denominator 2 times x plus 3 to the 1 half power times the derivative of the numerator, which is 0, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1 half times 2, which is 1, times x plus 3 to the, well, 1 less from 1 half, that's minus 1 half, and then all divided by the denominator squared, which is 4 times x plus 3 to the first power. All right, now we see that this goes to 0, because that's multiplied times 0. And here we end up at minus 1, and then this goes to the bottom, so we end up with y prime is equal to minus 1 divided by 4 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 to the 1 half, which is x plus 3 to the 3 halves power, and notice we end up with exactly the same answer as it should be. It's a good way to check. So now let's do it again, but we do it for something a little bit more complicated, where now we have a 2x squared inside the radical. So we first convert to exponential form, so y is equal to the quantity 2x squared plus 3 to the 1 half power. So the first thing we're going to do is take the first derivative y prime is equal to 1 half times 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 1 half power, we subtract from the exponent, and then we multiply times the derivative of what's inside, which is 4x. Simplifying that, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so we end up with y prime is equal to 2x times 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 1 half power. Now I can bring this to the bottom and use the quotient rule, or I can leave it in the numerator and use the product rule. Product rule is typically easier, so I'm going to use the product rule. I'm going to use the 2x and the 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 1 half power. Let's see what we get. So y double prime is equal to the first times the derivative of the second, which is minus 1 half times the quantity 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 1 half minus 1, which is minus 3 halves, times the derivative of what's inside, which would be 4x, plus the second, which is 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 1 half, 
times the derivative of the first, which is times two. All right, simplifying this one a little bit before we do something with it. So we have y double prime is equal to the one half and the two cancel out. We still have a minus and we have an x and a four x that would minus four x squared times 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 3 halves power. Over here, we have plus 2 times 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 1 half power. So what we should do now is we should factor out the one with the largest exponent. So when we do that, we get the following. We get y double prime is equal to 2x squared plus 3 to the minus 3 halves power. And when we do that, what we have left on the left side here, we have minus 4x squared. And on the right side, we have plus 2 times 2x squared plus 3 to some exponent. Now, what does that exponent need to be? So we mul multiply this times that, we get this back. And then you can clearly see that minus 3 halves plus 1 gives me minus 1 half. So I need exponent one. This will go to the denominator and this I need to simplify. So we have y double prime is equal to, we have minus 4x squared plus 4x squared, so that goes away, and then we have plus 2 times 3, which is 6, so we have 6 in the numerator divided by 2x squared plus 3 to the 3 halves power, we'll make that positive when we bring it to the denominator, and that then becomes our second derivative of our original function. And that is how it's done. Let me see if it's correct.